Hello, everyone, and welcome to Surviving Scientology on YouTube. This is your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Karen and I are switching to the new Evayer format, which has become so popular on YouTube, it's very easy to use. And to celebrate, I'm interviewing a special guest I've never interviewed, and that's my lovely wife, Karen De La Carriere. Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. You know, Karen, people who know us know that we are inseparable. We spend all of our time together. Uh, for new Scientology watchers, again, who, who may not know Karen's story, Karen spent 40 years in the Church of Scientology. She was on the flagship Apollo, where she was personally trained under L. Ron Hubbard himself to the level of Class 12 Auditor. When the flagship Apollo went ashore to Clearwater to take over that town, that poor unfortunate town, Karen trained to become a Class 12 case supervisor, which is the highest technical level you can reach in the church managing other class 12s she's delivered the l's power processing everything on her when she was in the church of scientology but karen you were also married to heber gents who was uh, who still is the president of the church of scientology oh he heber had a stroke a major stroke uh not that long ago and uh, mm -hmm. I don't think he's the president of anything. He's immobilized. Yeah. However, he yes, he was he he was the church spokesman. The reason things like this, a stroke, is so covered up, is uh, David Miscavige's cult of Scientology continues to <laughs> pitch unreal. Uh, <laughs> They're going to make you supernatural. You are going to flourish, prosper, be a success in wealth and health and higher enlightenment and so on. So when someone who did it all for 50 years, like Heber, a lot of OT5, nephrotes and stuff like that, when they get a stroke, I think it's covered up because it's an embarrassment. Yes. So it deters people from throwing in tens of millions, tens of millions of dollars to achieve these high, high states. Whereas, in fact, many people who've done it all, including OT8, quickly die off of heart attacks, diabetes, um, strokes, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and. All true. And um, well, two things. I, I mentioned that you were married to Heber because as the president of the Church of Scientology International, that's a, a, a PR job. He's not really the president. He's a spokesman. But the president's office is located in the Office of Special Affairs. So during the years you were Heber's assistant, you were in the Office of Special Affairs. Yes. So this, this just goes to your wide expertise. You were, you were a, an auditor, the top auditor, class 12 um, case supervisor, but you also know the church from the inside mm -hmm. working for the Office of Special Affairs. Mm -hmm. And so that establishes you as an expert in, in all things Scientology. Um, and so when we, uh, going back to the matter of, uh, of Heber's stroke, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, the church founder, also died of a stroke. He, he had one stroke and then a, about a week later, another stroke that killed him. And during that intervening period, they, they it's true the sheriff coroner's report showed they injected him with a psychiatric medication, visceral, and um, he died. And we all grow old and die. But the church had to spin Hubbard's death. They lied about it. Instead of saying, unfortunately, Mr. Hubbard passed away of a stroke in his sleep or whatever, they had to, they added the, the event at the Shrine Auditorium where they said L. Ron Hubbard laid down his body. Earl Cooley, church attorney, said this mighty Thetan laid down and he causatively dropped his body, like he, like, he, he left this. Well, I think it was David Miscavige that said that his body was an encumbrance. He no longer, it was just a liability because he was researching these high, high upper OT levels, which had to be done without a body. Mm. In other words, he only let go of his body to do this upper level OT research, which David Miscavige said was for you telling the audience, you, you will be the beneficiary of these higher, higher OT levels. 
that Hubbard will be doing in research after death. That was 30 years ago. Yes, it was. And um, excuse me, I'm adjusting a control. Um, Pat Broker was there at the death event. And he, and this goes to something esoteric in Scientology that people will find interesting that's not talked about or known. Uh, Pat Broker said that before he died, L. Ron Hubbard had written up everything about how a Scientologist is to die and what happens yeah. <laughs> right after you die. So, the big reveal. What did well, Hubbard say happens when a Scientologist dies? What are you supposed to do when you die? What, what goes on as a Scientologist is dying or preparing to die? Yeah. I just want to say that I always liked Pat Broker. I, I thought he was a he was a good guy. Um, I audited him on the Apollo. Um, <laughs> Pat is a gentle soul and one often wonders what direction Scientology would have taken if instead of a violent, brutal David Miscavige, we had a gentle soul like Pat. Anyway, I'm yeah. going adrift here. Pat Broca uh, hinted that there was now a special procedure that as you were nearing death, the Church of Scientology would give you this special death CS, okay, supervision. And it's very secretive, but here it is, I'm going to tell you. The first thing is to handle how you go in and out of the body. It's called interiorization, exteriorization. And there's special procedures here you, so that you do it without what's called charge, without harmful energy, without side effects. So that's step one. It's Now, step two is at the moment you die, this is, this is the procedure, and this is the technology in the church, which is taken very seriously. You have to find a heavenly body and run around and spin around it. It could be the moon, it could be the sun, it could be earth, but you are to run at depth. Find a heavenly body and run a satellite around Just it. Just orbit around it. Orbit around it. Yeah. And this is supposed to do what? <laughs> What's the rationale as, as opposed well, to doing something else? Hubbard, Hubbard wrote in his advices that way back in space opera, trillions of years ago, Hubbard, as a good guy, was chasing a very bad guy, an evil guy. Yeah. And this was a chase. And this went on and on and on. And Hubbard said, finally, he caught up with him. And lo and behold, this evil guy was now sane. Hmm. He had lost all his maliciousness and his virulence and was cured of his psychopath nature hmm. and Hubbard said that the running intensely for that long had cured his sociopathic nature wow. that's just Hubbard's advice in his, oh, sure. in his thing that that was the theory behind the running program now I was tortured at the running program so I <laughs> I was punished when on the RPF, the Gulag, the Rehabilitation Project, I was forced to run 12 hours a day. Even all these years later, I, those days were dark, dark days for me. And many of the execs of the church, David Mayo, many execs were forced to run around a pole in the California desert as punishment. However, now we're in, in the, they charge $2,500 now, which they call going into outer space spiritually yeah. and all this. You run around in a darkened room, you run around a pole in the superpower building in Clearwater. You give 
them $2,500 and you run around this poll. It's called now Cause Resurgence Rundown. Mm. And for me, it was a torture punishment. Yeah. yeah, it was used that way. And I, 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 David Mayo, who was your mentor when mm -hmm. he was senior CS, uh, he actually lost teeth. He, he, yes. His body began to leach calcium. Yes, he lost all his teeth on this. It was brutal. It was, mm -hmm. it's, and, and that uh, is inhumane and it's a form of torture. Yes. Now they on uh, the, the so called flag building the, the sixth floor is largely a running track. And well the sixth floor, yes. That's yeah, where yeah. you do this well, rundown. One of Scientology's magazines, uh in terms of Scientology hyperbole, they can turn something ordinary into something extraordinary. They say there's uh, no other place no other delivery space like it hmm. on this planet. And like no, I guess you don't go anywhere else on Earth and give someone twenty five hundred bucks to run around. And you could do it multiple times. You can yeah. keep doing it. There's yeah. no limit to how many you want to give. You want to give flag service or two thousand five hundred dollars and run around a pole. You can do it, and you can do it again, and you can do it again. Well, you could and go you, out jogging <laughs> in the park for free. <laughs> I mean, I, mm -hmm. nevertheless, th this is sort of the logic by which Scientology works. The, uh, the question I want to ask you about, um, switching gears, Leah Remini's show has focused attention on Scientology and disconnection. And, and you mentioned to me that when, when you were in the church, the Office of Special Affairs did a survey of Scientologists globally. Mm -hmm. Disconnection was mentioned as one of the big issues. What, what yes. was the survey about? Um, they, the survey was done to find out what were the real trouble spots that caused all the rah-rah and the people leaving and there's a huge amount of resignations from the church in 1982 after the missions were purged, the mission massacre and hundreds of people wrote in resignations from them. So a survey was done and disconnection came up as the number one problem of the church. Mm. I often wondered how it can be sustainable long range when, I'm not going to keep calling it a church. No, this is a no. cult. This is, is a cult. This is a cult. Yes. It has every qualification of a cult. Adoration of David Miscavige as the leader. Um, Absolutely, from yep. family belonging, you know, every every definition of a cult. So, uh, the surveyed answers were disconnection was a very very hot, and money extortion, what the church called regging, sales actions. Way back in eighty two, people think only lately has there been a great emphasis in sales and money and this this has been going on this has been going on for decades yes people protested that salespeople could ring their doorbell at midnight at one in the morning to ask for money and then the third thing was the whole the whole status of Claire and the confusions on it and People are testing clear and natural clear and canceling it and redoing it and so on. Those were the reasons. Well, well let's let's cover those uh, briefly. The Church of, of Scientology says that disconnection is a personal choice that people make. However, that's like saying they make this decision with a gun to their head. People don't. If I'm if I'm connected to if I'm a Scientologist and I'm connected to someone who who's left the church and publicly spoke out, say it's my my brother, right? I'm ordered to disconnect. But what goes on in the Office of Special Affairs? They so that they can legally try to say it was my personal choice. What do they do to me when they call me in? Say, hey, your brother's been posting online. 
you're called in by an ethics officer, a person designate, designated to handle moral, ethical, and OSA issues, Office of Special Affairs. There is always the thought that you could be contaminated or get hidden influences mm -hmm. if you're connected to someone who has spoken out against the church or is critical in any the church permits no criticism at all not even if they're dark you cannot be critical of the cult that believes it is always right and it is godlike in its decisions its policy it will not change therefore if you are connected to someone who has spoken out your toast unless you totally disconnect from them but the way they do it as i understand it so it, you're summoned into an ethics yeah. office and you're it <laughs> you're given a well you're asked gently at first and when you refuse that's when the threats escalate yeah, they up the and finally gradient. you're told finally you're told look you're going to be declared and once you're declared any family within that are weaker and will not you you lose your family you lose your children that might be on staff if you have a Scientology business they will all walk out and collapse your business the next day now your Scientology employees but disconnection means being thrown out in the wilderness cut off from everyone you knew but here's how Scientology is able to say that it's a personal choice they make so let's in this example of my brother I'm, I'm told I, I need to disconnect from him I have to either make a phone call write a letter or both saying I'm disconnecting from you until yes. you come to your senses contact the International Justice Chief to A to E right so yes. I'm actually under the threat of expulsion from the church and being declared an SP myself, I actually have to write the letter or make the phone call. And therefore they say, see, it's a personal choice. So <laughs> this is just... Oh, no, no, no. You may have to write the letter right there in yeah. the, in, under the nose of, of the ethics officer. You may need to make that phone call right there while they're listening in. This is a church cult manipulated action. There is no power of choice. That's the thing. There is no power of choice. No. Your freedom is completely taken away on this issue. The cult of Scientology tells you who you can friend, who you cannot friend, what you can say, what you cannot say, what you can read, and what you cannot read. You know, Jeffrey, the cult promotes the buzzword freedom freedom from give us your money we will give you freedom from your compulsions freedom from your bank freedom from overwhelm freedom from aberration freedom 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 the truth is it's complete entrapment sure you don't even have the power to decide what you can say what you can think what you can read who you can friend who you cannot friend. it is completely utterly bogus to use the word freedom every step of the way in the cult where you're moved around like a piece of furniture is more and more entrapment sure it's controlling and and to be a Scientologist in good standing means you've surrendered your will to the church you even have to engage in thought stopping thought control yes. cutting off friends and family who interfere with the group your progress Believe me, in Scientology. I did this for 40 years uh, I, I, <laughs> I've been there done it yeah and, and the point the only point I want to make on there disconnection is not a personal choice as, as, as the church claims there's severe penalties if you don't make that personal choice and you will pay hell if you don't make that personal choice so for people who are watching Leah's show when uh, these disclaimers air, uh, we have a saying among old guard critics, I've said it before, how do you know when the Church of Scientology is lying? Answer, its mouth is moving. So hmm. enough on disconnection. 
the second thing I want to talk about was the state of clear. It's been a moving target since 1950 when Dianetics was released on May 9, 1950. Mm -hmm. There have been Dianetics clears, natural clears, theta clears, past life clears. What, what, you know all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for our new Scientology watchers, I'll say that the state of clear, it's not like being uh, baptized in a Christian church completely different thing uh it's something you have to get audited on up through the grades to clear right mm -hmm. now how does a person first of all what is it clear and how does a scientologist know they have gone clear <laughs> well um it's a moment in time where the person who's been getting a lot of counseling and telling many, many things realizes that they are really the creator of everything that is going on. They're what's called mocking it up. And when you take extreme responsibility for everything happening and you're not pointing the finger and you realize you are source, it's a moment of acceleration. Mm. And actually there's a mechanism which kind of gets knocked off because you stop incessantly creating pictures and this and that. And the point is that <laughs> there's a judge in Texas, Judge Walter, a brilliant man, in the Texas lawsuit and he said, this is important in relation to Claire, he said, the preponderance of the evidence shows that Scientology Inc. is in the business of selling and leasing goods and services. Wow. Leasing is what they do with a clear certificate. Mm. Now, you could get this kind of exhilaration no matter what you could get a kind you, you could get this in Buddhism. In sure. fact, yeah. there are OTHs that go to Buddhism and get you could you can get moments of exhilaration. In Scientology, you get a certificate, which is a status symbol in the cult, that you are clear. Yeah. yeah. In, in, but it's least just like the quote I gave you that the judge made. It's a lease because it's often canceled. In fact, everyone who is declared a suppressive person in the declared says, the declare says, all certs and awards are canceled. Yeah. Therefore, it doesn't, when, when, when the judge said it's leasing you services and leasing you you are only leased that because in a New York second it can be just wiped off because the church now undeclares you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hubbard originally described a clear different ways, but he said a clear no longer has his or her reactive mind. So there's the reactive mind, right? This phone will represent the reactive mind. And he said it's the when the reactive mind is gone, when you realize it's your own mental activity you've been creating and you stop mocking it up, it goes away. And and then you're supposedly free to move on to clear. But here's how it works. Religious Technology Center owns clear. It's a, it's a trademark word, clear. It's like Kleenex. <laughs> so first of all, it's not a spiritual state. It's a, it's a copyrighted trade secret. <laughs> Well, how could it, something like that? Well, the reactive mind, this is a, a, a trade secret and you, it, it's a service you purchase in 12.5 hour increments. You could spend 50,000, 100,000 or more to go clear. And supposedly, engrams are mental objects that, that oppress you. And when you realize that you're creating these mental objects and you stop doing that activity, then you go clear. So you're given, the, the Religious Technology Center over which David Miscavige is the chairman of the board, 
they license the Church of Scientology International, which licenses churches. So how it really works is you go into a Scientology org and you meet a Sea Org member who audits you or a staff member, and all the money goes up through the church back to RTC and CST and all that. So what you get is a provisional statement saying that you're clear, but that's a statement from a business certifying that you have attained, you, that you self-attested to some progress. What's interesting is the Church of Scientology doesn't guarantee what they sell. And they said that, and I've covered this many times. We don't stand behind, we do not guarantee any particular results from auditing. Let so. me tell you, this, this whole, this cleared thing, even their own case supervisors that send you to a test clear a month later, a, a year later, cancel it. And each time you must give the cult $5,000 to do a rundown series of counseling actions called Clear Certainty Rundown. I know a girl who's had eight Clear Certainty Rundowns at five. $40,000 each time <coughs> the cult itself, the representative of the cult, the case supervisor, sent her to declare, and then the, they themselves canceled it. In any honest ethical business that sells you something, when they mess up and make a mistake, if it's a manufacturing defect or any service which is just bad, an honest ethical business makes good on the money you've given them. You either get a refund or you get a brand new product. Your iPod was bad, you get a new iPod. In the cult of Scientology, every single time they mess up on you. I know people who've gone back to F Flag Service Org in Clearwater to repair their L's nine times, ten times, eleven times because the L is so messed up. <laughs> and dishonestly, every time they repair it, they count it in statistics as an L completion, which was completed five years ago, and these are all repairs. However, that's just technical. Um, in Scientology, there is no certainty in clear certainty rundown because you have to pay them $5,000 each time you go to repair the so-called clear status. Mm -hmm. That's confusing because if, if, if this is my reactive mind, right, mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm a Scientologist and I say, oh, I'm no longer mocking it up, but then six months or a year later, oh, wait, you falsely attested, it's back. Well, but I experienced it being gone. No, it's back. We're revoking your <laughs> service. So I have to, and Scientology is the, the, like the science of certainty, your certainty, right? Number of times over the data equals certainty, blah, blah, blah. So I'm certain that I'm clear until I'm not certain because this is back. Correct mind. Oh, there it goes. Oh, correct mind's back. So it's one of those things that your spiritual, your state of clear OT can be roped at the whim and fiat of the Church of Scientology at any time for any reason. And that includes if you have the wrong friends on Facebook and the Scientology Facebook police could do. <laughs> Facebook police could cost you your clear cert. If you refuse to disconnect from someone on Facebook and you keep refusing, you will be declared suppressive person. But, um, but before that, you could be, you could lose your clear cert, right? So yes. I, I'm just saying that if, it's not really a spiritual state. It's it shows your relationship to the Church of Scientology and your willingness to comply. Clear could be, maybe in the Church of Scientology could be called a state of compliance, willing to spend more money to go up to the OT levels. Uh, I know over the years several people who attested clear, and then had mental breakdowns. Wow. So much for the reactive mind going away. The That's most famous one, the most famous one, is one you all know about, the famous Lisa McPherson, yeah. who attested Claire and showed her Claire certificate on the stage. The picture is in Google Images, and a short time later, 
She walked down Fort Harrison Avenue, took off all her clothes, stripped naked, and was taken to the psychiatric unit of the Morton Plant Hospital. Well, I know several people who were tested clear and then had complete and utter mental breakdowns. Well, what, dri so, what, what drives them so hard? I mean, I know this, with, this with, whole word clear is yeah. murky water and yeah. uh, very, very murky water and exhilarating. You can have counseling and hit highs. David Mayo always said that he did not subscribe to clear. He subscribed to clearer mm. states of higher and higher release. We're, we're talking a lot of sure, type but, here. This may not be, you know, But, but for people in the, in, in the church, it is interesting that, 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 that clear is not a stable state in the church. It's like bad software. A lot of it could go wrong. It's subject to the political, the psychopolitical, the paranoid cosmic psychopolitics of Scientology, <laughs> as you know, as a writer has said. And so it did survey. It's like, uh, and then, of course, Jason McGay famously said in Mark Bunker's video, show me a motherfucking clear. And when he roared that, show me a fucking clear, the whole world heard it of, of Scientology watchers. Jason really said something meaningful. And that that completely corresponds to what you were saying about the survey. So it's disconnection and, and clear. The third money extortion, regging. A reg is a Scientology salesperson trained in hard sell, hard close, get your money now, now, because stats and Scientology are due every Thursday at 2 p.m. So all the money that comes in, new money must come in after Thursday at 2 p.m. So there's this relentless greed for money that goes on all the time. And it bankrupts people, it gets them in credit card debt, they put second mortgages on their house, spend their kids' education fund. I mean, it's horrendous because Scientology I've often thought the end phenomena of corporate Scientology, Church of Scientology, it is a corporation. So I'm correctly referring it as a corporation. It's a religious corporation. I've often thought the end phenomena is nothing left of a person. They literally pick everything, even even the bone marrow, and they don't throw you out till you're you're they're done with you. So. Yes, I think I get mail from all over the world because right at the end of every. YouTube video I put up, it gives my email address to write to me, karendelack at gmail.com, and I continue to get. And I think one of the most angry, disappointed, betrayed, common denominator emails I get are from people who have advance payments, mm. which they thought was just lying in credit for eventual services. And now they've left Scientology. And Scientology grabs the money, refuses to refund what was essentially... If, if you make deposits in a bank, that's your money. It's just credit. You haven't done a withdrawal. So these are people who have not taken services, have not used one thin dime of that money. Quarter of a million dollars, $125,000, $220,000. And the cult which craves recognition in religiosity. It screams in the law courts, yeah. it's religious, religious, tax religious, but it's on the, it's on the rank of a ripoff artist, which is not religious. It's not religious to take people's money under the pretense of, this is just credit to your bridge. And then when the person doesn't want to do bridge, the cult says, well, you donated the money. They forget that they extorted it under extreme pressure. This was a donation, and we don't have to give it back. I believe they promised the IRS they would cheerfully refund people their money. Didn't they promise? Yeah, them? yeah. what they, what happened, and, and to clarify again, this is... This is why I tell new Scientology watchers, you have to be very careful about how Scientology says things. You mm. have to listen and read the contracts to see them, how they lie and mislead. In Scientology, they call it money on account. They say, hey, look, you want to go up your bridge? 
flow some power to the theta universe. They, it's the same thing. It, it's the same thing. That flow. Cre- Christ- flow. Yeah. Start a flow. Yes, open a flow. It's the same thing that Christian televangelist con artists say, seed faith. Plant a seed, send me $5,000. You know, it's that same kind of nonsense. Now, when they say put money on account toward your bridge, money on account sounds like it's money in a bank account that's your money. But it's not. This is where this is where Scientology is dishonest mm-hmm. and is lying. Yeah. And where you should get a lawyer if you're a Scientologist, read every contract, get a copy. This is where Scientology does not give you informed consent. When you give money to Scientology for advanced payments or money on account, yeah. what you're doing and what the contracts you sign that they have say just to prove this paperwork, you know, they don't give you copies of, you're mm-hmm. donating it. And under U.S. law, a donation to a church is considered a gift that's given with no thought of getting it back. So watch this. Scientology told the IRS when it was applying for its tax exemption in 92 that our policy is to give people their money back because it acts as a quality control mechanism. If they're not happy with Scientology, then we don't want them there. That way, when we give them when we give a repayment or a refund back to someone who's unhappy it keeps the very few unhappy people out of scientology so it's actually a quality control check but what's what what really goes on is scientology and i have actual experience on this uh people have talked to me about their repayment hassles um the church will say uh no they they will not acknowledge emails they won't answer emails they won't answer letters and they're, they're, they, they actually stopped even responding to you when you asked for a refund because people put the, reach, the refusal to give refund letters on the internet and mocked it and everyone could just read the, the go what, pound sand letters. You're not going to get any money back. We're a religion and we don't have to do, give it back, blah, blah, blah. So... So they won't even respond. They won't well, even. No, they won't. And there's one reason they do it is this is another very subtle thing. They, the Church of Scientology told the IRS refunds and repayments are based on a meet or demand basis. I'm sorry, a, a meet or abandoned basis. So mm-hmm. this is the way the Church of Scientology stakes out their fraudulent little game. They either have to meet the repayment request Mm-hmm. Or they have to get you to abandon it. Mm-hmm. So legally, yeah. if they can drag you out for years and exhaust you and wear you down, and you legally abandon, you forfeit all that right to the eighty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand, whatever you have on account. They'll just mm-hmm. wear you out. The other thing they want you to do is come in and complete the CVB routing form, Claims Verification mm-hmm. Board. And as Tony posted a letter for a famous letter we call the Cash Twenty Two letter. <laughs> um, if you're declared a suppressive person, yeah. you can't go onto Scientology property anymore. Yeah. And if you can't go onto Scientology property, guess what? The CVB letter has to be completed in a Scientology yeah. org, but since you can't come onto our property or we'll call the police, you can't complete it. So yeah. that's a catch-22 that's phony. And, um, so the, and then finally they'll say things like, well, you deducted this from your income tax return, meaning like, are you a crook? They're trying to imply that you're a crook, that you took a donation off your taxes. And so all you'd need to do is say, yes, I deducted it. Well, I'll amend my return for that year and pay the IRS back. And this is something where, where if it gets too heavy, you need to get a lawyer involved. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just telling you what you said about the survey that was conducted a lot of time ago still holds true. People are leaving the Church of Scientology because of disconnection high pressure sales where they want every dollar now for all kinds of stuff there's i I once made a list of 50 things and i may may make it into an article on my scientology money project 50 things that the church of scientology can raise money for and it's absurd so the church of scientology is designed to be all money in yes no money out yes they stockpiled you you found you found those tax returns they're sitting with 
three billion, probably five billion by now yeah. in hard cash. They flaunt these big donors, patron, meritorious, flabiorious, gratorious, blah, blah. Yeah. He gave five million, he gave 10 million. There's no compassion. There's no, no. empathy. If somebody is truly struggling, He's got $120,000 sitting at flag. He's about to lose. He's completely, utterly in desperate need, maybe even for money for cancer treatment. Scientology will hold on to its billions and not have the charity or the empathy or the compassion in their heart to give back. A twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar refund, one hundred and twenty thousand. That's peanuts when you're sitting with billions. Certainly, peanuts. certainly. And 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 even if you do some Scientology and you decide it's no longer for you, you don't want to be a Scientologist. Mm -hmm. And you just say, look, this is not for me. It's not what I thought. I don't want to do it. I'd like to have my money on account back. They will keep the money. They, they will keep your money. They, they will make. They will keep your money. They will money. Make, it, yeah. You give the cult of Scientology money. It is. Gone with the wind, yeah. now and forever. Yeah, when, uh, for what it's worth, Marty one time said occasionally they'll give some money when there gets too much pressure. They'll give some money back. Yeah. I I don't know about that. All I've ever heard is all the stories of money never gotten back. Yeah. And so okay. this is this is one reason the IRS needs to open up an investigation into revoking Scientology's 501c3 income tax religion. Because it's a religion of bad faith, dirty contracts, broken dreams. The IRS final uh, closing agreement that was leaked said the IRS may reopen the investigation of finding of fraud, malfeasance, or misrepresentation of material facts, which we can show all of that, and we have. Yes. So yes. we'll end this with uh, please sign my petition on change.org. Just go. Scientology revoke tax exemption. You'll see. You'll see it there under my name, Jeffrey Augustine, because I do want to take it to the IRS. Um, because I think the the one way to help bring this monster to heel is to strip it of its income tax protections. Karen, any final words for our interview? Uh, well, uh, if you watched it all the way through to this point, join. Please subscribe. Give it a like, and. We'll dream up some good, good topics, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening, and as always, we'll be in very good touch.